Greetings, this is Paul the Poke from paulthepoke.com. Today's topic, Sanhedrin requests to blow shofar on Temple Mount for Rosh Hashanah or uh, Yom Teruah or Feast of Trumpets um, for the new year 5781, 2020 on the Gregorian calendar. Scripture references out of Numbers 10, verse 10. On the day of your gladness also, and at your appointed feasts, which this would be, and at the beginning of months, your months, this would be, you shall blow the trumpets over your burnt offerings and over the sacrifices of your peace offerings. They shall be a reminder of you before your God. I am the Lord, your God. So no temple, so no sacrifices, no peace offerings, no burnt offerings. But for the first time since the destruction of the temple in 70 AD, the Sanhedrin wants to blow the shofar on the Temple Mount to bring in the secular Jewish New Year, Rosh Hashanah. And this holiday has many names. It's called the Feast of Trumpets by Christians. It's recognized as the Jewish New Year, Rosh Hashanah. In Judaism, it's called Yom Teruah, which means the day of blowing. The holiday is set to commence on the Gregorian date, at sunset, Friday, September 18, 2020, pending the confirmation of the new moon by two witnesses. Now, on a Hebrew calendar, this would initiate the month of Tishri and start the year 5781. Now, for some complete details surrounding the Sanhedrin request, see this linked article below at Breaking Israel News. It's by Adam Berkowitz. Uh, great article, by the way, great article. And all I did here was pull some quotes from the article from leading rabbis with the Sanhedrin. And uh, this is from Aviad Vosoli. He's uh, with the Land of Israel organization. And I quote, Jews are only permitted to enter the Temple Mount five days a week, Sunday to Thursday. This year, the first day of Rosh Hashanah, is on Saturday, the Sabbath. And according to Jewish law, it is forbidden to blow the shofar on the Sabbath, except for on the Temple Mount. So we submitted a request to permit a group of Jews to do so, to blow the shofar on the Temple Mount on the first day of Rosh Hashanah, which happens to be a Sabbath. So it lines up with Jewish law. Pretty neat how that works for this year. Um, Vasoli went on to further comment, and I quote, this is not a legal issue. The law mandates that we are permitted to do this. Our request is that the police be instructed to permit this religious ritual to take place. And, and they're referring to the Mosaic law, um, not necessarily secular law. At least that's my understanding of it as I listen to this. Now, the following quotes are also from Rabbi Hillel Weiss. Uh, he is a Sanhedrin spokes spokesman and chairman of Organization of Seventy Nations. And those of you not familiar with the Organization of Seventy Na Nations, this is, you know, coming out of Babel with the Seventy Nations, uh, which would be the Seventy Nations. Um, they're wanting to put that back together again and have it replace the United Nations. And so... Rabbi Hillel Weiss is the chairman, or he's the head, of Organization of Seventy Nations. And here's a quote from Rabbi Weiss. Our demand now is to apply the one true sovereignty onto Zion. Call out to the King of Kings with the eternal voice of the shofar to spread his kingdom to every creature. We are calling on the current Israeli government <coughs> to take their role in manifesting the universal desire for redemption, which is the real mandate of the state of Israel. It is our role to enable all the nations to pray before Hashem, which means the word or the name, sorry about that, um, with one voice, as we did on at Mount Sinai, like we did after creation, like we are destined to do again in the end of days when the dead will be resurrected, the day of universal and true freedom. And that, again, is from Hillel Weiss, uh, spokesman for the Sanhedrin. Further comments. Blowing of the shofar on the Temple Mount of Rosh Hashanah 
on the Temple Mount of Rosh Hashanah is not a simple ritual as it is done in synagogues around the world. This is not just for the Jews who are there to hear it. This is a shofar call to all nations of the world. Now, more than ever before, we are crying out to Hashem to bless us with life, peace, and an end to plagues. Every leader in the world who cares and who sees himself as a representative of one of the 70 nations should call on Netanyahu to permit this to take place. And Rabbi Weiss closed, or this was the closing comment in the article, blowing the shofar that is specific to the temple as a cry out to God to prevent the division of his land and the loss of his house. This shofar will topple anyone who is set on dividing God's land and opposing the establishment of a house of prayer for all nations in Jerusalem. Just as the sound of the shofar toppled the walls that stood between the Jews and entering the promised land. So lots of prophetic elements in his statements. A little warning, don't divide the land. And, um, you know, again, this was an article by Adam Berkowitz, Sanhedrin petitions government to blow shofar on Temple Mount for the first time since Temple destruction. And we're going to see, will we see history? Why not? You know, this is 20, 2020. I mean, we've had plenty of things happen here in 2020. No reason why this couldn't happen as well. <laughs> um, this is going to be categorized under Paul the Pope. Fall feasts, prophecy, Sanhedrin, and temple. Um, it's during the season of Teshuva. And... Um, you know, this is pretty interesting stuff. And again, they wanted to sacrifice a Passover lamb on the Temple Mount during Passover. That didn't happen. And now they're wanting to blow the shofar on the Temple Mount. And this one lines up with a Sabbath. So they have good reason. They are looking to reinstate the sacrificial system. And I know I'm going to get some... Uh, blowback by some of you folks out there. We don't need to sacrifice these things anymore. Jesus was the sacrifice. And yes, that is true. It is also Jesus himself who said these things must come to pass. He knew it is prophetic that the temple will be rebuilt. It is prophetic that the sacrificial system will be reinitiated. It is what it is. Those are Jesus's words. He recognizes that he understands that and he prophesied that these things will happen. So no, his because of his sacrifices, further sacrifices are not necessary, but they are prophetic and the temple will be built again. It's going to happen. So, you know, just another example of how we are getting closer to that moment. Um, keeping an eye on the red heifer as well, getting close on three red heifers for sacrifice, for the purification of the people to allow the third temple to be built. Now, if you're interested in these sort of things, please feel free to click on this blue bar. Also, we have a gray box that's open sometimes. Type in your email address. We'll send you out something every time we put out something. And the way the world's going, the way this month is going, I suspect we're going to have a lot of action probably between now and through the fall feasts, which again start roughly Friday, sunset, September 18th. So about three, three, four weeks away from now. So appreciate you guys following along. Keep your eyes on this. This is a very interesting, simple request. We'll see if the Israeli government goes for it or not. Got more people, more Jews ascending the Temple Mount. Interesting times. Appreciate it. Take care. Bye.